This video is on uh, the ship's magnetic compass and we'll be mainly discussing the different parts of the ship's magnetic compass and uh, what are they normally used for. Alright, so I'll start with the ship's magnetic compass. So just to give you a little bit of background, it was uh, Shen Kuo uh, in 1088 um, from China who was the first to describe the magnetic needle compass which would be used for navigation. It was Shen who also discovered the concept of true north. In Europe, it was first described by Alexander Neckham in 1187. However, what we'll be focusing today on is the Kelvin's compass, which is named after Lord Kelvin. And uh, that's because uh, it was the Kelvin River which flowed by his uh, office in Glasgow, Scotland, if, if I'm not wrong, because of which he was given the title of Baron Kelvin or Lord Kelvin. So he was the inventor of the modern mariner's compass, which is, uh, was patented way back in the 1800s or late 1800s rather. Alright, and you must have seen this on your ship's monkey island, that is the, the deck above the bridge and normally it's all covered uh, to keep it protected from the weather elements. So I'll take you through the parts of this uh, modern day uh, magnetic compass because this is something that you will identify with. Alright, now the compass types, there are two types of compass, the dry card compass and the wet card compass. Uh, the dry card compass used to be made of uh, the card of the dry card compass used to be made of rice paper and graduated with degree and point markings just like the wet card compass uh, and uh, the dry card compass had a group of six eight or ten magnetic needles suspended by fine threads parallel to one another and all that but the reason i don't take you through the dry card compass is that these days dry card compasses are more or less obsolete and they have been uh, replaced by the wet bowl compasses or the wet card compasses even the smaller compasses which are carried in the live boats are wet card compasses. So there was no point in me showing you the dry card compass because it's an obsolete compass. So I'll take you through the wet card compass. Alright, so the wet card compass was developed in order to achieve a card that is almost totally free of the typical oscillations and irregular movements of the dry card compass which are inevitably caused by the motion of the vessel. So the liquid which is there in the wet card compass because of which it's called the wet card compass. So the liquid in which the card floats in, it kind of provides a damping medium to the oscillations and vibrations experienced by the card. So basically, because when the vessel or the ship is at sea, it experiences a lot of vibrations due to movement and oscillations and you know, ship's pitch and roll. And even if they're not pitching and rolling, there's a lot of vibration experienced because of the engine and the heavy structure of the ship. Now those vibrations affect the magnetic compass to dampen that effect on the magnetic card the liquid is provided. Alright, the liquid is two parts alcohol, one part water and uh, that is the liquid in the wet card compass. Alright, this is a quick cross section or underside view of the card of the compass. So if you can uh, imagine this to be a cross sectional view uh, and I'll show you the real view as well. I'll show you how what it actually looks like but this is just a cross sectional view where if you can imagine this to be the compass board as shown in the diagram and these are the balancing rings. I'll show you what all that uh, is and what all those all those things mean. Uh, this is the verge glass through which you actually view the compass. So it's like a cross section. So to on top of the verge glass is through which you view the compass card. Uh, this is the bottom glass, of course. Uh, these are corrugated rings provide for strengthening of the compass. And uh, I'll move on now to what it actually looks like. Because uh, this is the pivot. Pivot is the... the the, the it's like a it's like the main the the float actually rests on a pivoted point so this is the pivot because the weight of almost the entire arrangement is taken by the float in the center and only a small amount is transmitted to the pivot which is like a jewel on the underside of the float sighted on an iridium point so this arrangement reduces the friction to the minimum the whole thing is sealed in an airtight bowl with a glass face or the verge glass and filled with the liquid which is like I said is two parts alcohol one part water some compasses also use a very thin oil and that is the damping effect of the liquid which inhibits any rapid motion of the unit out of horizontal as well as stabilizing against vibrations so the wet ball system is designed such that the card and needle and ring and magnet is fixed to a float and the float is what uh, rests this is the float so this is what rests on a, the jeweled uh, pivot 
these are the magnets this is the compass card uh, if you can view the uh, cross sectional view this is the label line which marks the different readings on the magnetic compass card Alright, so this is this is the view I was showing you. So this is an actual photograph, and you can see the float here. The white hollow structure is the float. You can see the jeweled iridium or the pivot on which the float rests. So the float takes up most of the weight, and a little bit is transmitted to the pivot. So this is what I was talking about, right? So you can see the whole uh, arrangement here, right? So dry card is now obsolete, so I'll not talk about it. So properties of the wet card type I have told you is a liquid that dampens the uh, effect of the oscillations and the vibrations and the movement of the card, movement of the bowl and against the ship's vibrations. And the pivot point that I showed you is made of iridium. It rides on a jeweled cap like you shown before and the float actually minimizes the weight basically taking on all the weight it minimizes the weight and it's nearly frictionless so it's kept frictionless so that it is not affected by any kind of uh, accelerations or forces uh, which will affect the reading of the magnetic compass card. The card is made as light as possible. The center of the gravity is just below the pivot point that I showed you before. And the weight is distributed to the edges of the card. Uh, the design of this card gives the best mechanical advantage. The housing of the compass is an airtight bowl, like I told you before. And it is filled with water and alcohol mix. The ratio is normally two parts to one. Sometimes they also use thin oil. Uh, this is iridium. This is, I'm just showing you what iridium means. This is the this is the iridium with which they, they make the pivot. It's like the jeweled underside of the float is the iridium point. So that is the iridium. Uh, it takes uh, it's a lot of for strengthening of the float. All right, so it's very hard but also very brittle and is very corrosion resistance. So that's why it's used in uh, magnetic compasses. So this is what the compass binnacle or the Kelvin's compass looks like. So I've taken some photographs. In future, I plan to take a video as well and show you uh, up close what it looks like in a video. So these are this is a different view of the Kelvin's compass, and I'll take you through the different parts of the Kelvin compass and what they are normally used for. So this is the magnetic compass bowl that's mounted on uh, gimbals, and the gimbals allow it to be moved, but at the same time to be kept horizontal to be able to take bearings. So when the ship is rolling and pitching, the gimbals provide enough uh, mobility for the for the bowl to uh, counteract for those pitching and rolling movements, but at the same time keeping the card horizontal in an airtight bowl. These are called uh, port and starboard quadrantal correctors. In many books, it's also called as Kelvin's balls, uh, named after Lord Kelvin, of course but they are also called uh, port and starboard quadrantal correctors. They are actually basically magnetic compass correctors. So a magnetic compass has about five to uh, five correctors. So if we include this as one, and then I'll take you through the other correctors as well. So then you have the port and starboard, so the longitudinal ethos ship correctors, the healing air bucket, and the Flinders bars. All together, they are considered to be five correctors of compass and uh, they correct for the five coefficients of uh, 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 five coefficients of a magnetic compass so these five coefficients basically refer to how a magnetic compass gets influenced on a ship so i won't go into the details of that basically just remember these are correctors and what happens you can see these uh, balls are kept on a groove so you can move along move them along on a groove you can adjust the position of these balls uh, it's not a very long groove, but it's uh, good enough for you to adjust it. So the closer you go to the magnetic, uh, the, the, the gimbal or the rather the compass bowl, the higher is the effect. The further you put the gimbal or put the quadrantal correctors away from the compass bowl, the lower is the effect. So although the, the groove on which they move is not very long, but uh, you can move them around and you can adjust it. So this is the job of you know, uh, qualified compass adjusters who come and comes and corrects the compass. This is the Flinders bar and I'll show you a different view of that as well. So the Flinders bars comprises of magnets of different lengths, shapes and sizes. They are basically cylinder in shapes, but what I mean is the size of the cylinders and uh, sometimes differs. So this is uh, full of uh, cylindrical shaped magnets and uh, this Flinders bar is the case. So inside the case there are magnets and you can adjust the number of magnets you want to keep inside depending on how much of magnetism you want to correct. Uh, and uh, this is also a corrector. Then you have the clinometer here. The clinometer basically tells you 
whether the ship is healing or listing. Uh, the reason is that uh, the magnetic compass should be corrected. Uh, normally it's corrected in port and it is corrected when the ship is absolutely upright because if the ship is not upright, then the corrections will differ or how you adjust the magnetic compass correctors differ from the time that the ship is upright. So that's why compass adjusters prefer the ship to be in port and when they are absolutely upright, that is there is no listing or healing because then they can calculate the uh, correctors that have to be applied and then apply accordingly. There is a healing error bucket uh, which is access door. You can open this door. You can see a small uh, a square shaped hole. I'll show you a close up of this once you open this door. So you open this door, you find the healing error bucket inside and I'll, I'll show you. I'll tell you about that later on. All right, then, then you have the port and the starboard side, earth worship and forward and aft magnets. So these are two characters here. So one you can see, if you can uh, see the magnetic needle coming out of the uh, starboard side locker, uh, that one goes in an earthward ship way. So that corrects for the earthward ship magnetism. The other one that you see with just the blue part sticking out, again in the starboard side locker, you can see just slightly above the the longer needle. You can see there's a blue compass sticking out. So basically that corrects for the fore and aft of magnetism of the ship. So the ship gets influenced by, because of the Earth's magnetism, it gets influenced in the fore and aft component, in the earthward ship component, in the healing component, uh, that is the vertical component as well. And so these are different corrections that you apply for. The Flinders bars and the port and starboard quadrantals, they correct for the soft magnetism. The permanent magnetism uh, is corrected by the starboard side or port side earthward ship and forward and aft magnets as well as, as the healing error bucket. Alright, so the blue and the red needle, the blue and the red also uh, depends on whether the ship's uh, which, uh, what kind of magnetism needs to be corrected. So accordingly you put the that color of the needle inside the corrector. Uh, also you have to remember you can see there are a number of holes in which you can put in the magnetic needles. If you look at the the locker, starboard side locker, a similar arrangement is there in the port side as well. You can see there are a number of holes. In one hole, out of one hole, there's a magnetic needle sticking out. And then in another hole, there's a blue needle which is sticking out as well. So because there are a number of holes here, what you have to remember is you can put magnetic needles of different sizes, shapes and lengths, depending on uh, what kind of magnetism you want to correct. This is the job of a qualified compass adjuster. So if you're a seafarer, you don't have to worry too much about it. But you must know about these things. And you must also know that these needles they can be put at the bottom most hole or any other hole and the higher you go up the holes from the bottom the higher is the effect on the magnetic compass so when you if you have man access to a magnetic compass and maybe someday i can make a video on this i will show you that uh, when you adjust the position of the needles the higher you move up from bottom the higher is the effect on the magnetic card so the card starts to move you can see it and you can experiment also the different sizes and shapes of the needles have different effects on the card now this is not an exact science so what normally compass adjusters do is they calculate the coefficients of magnetism that need to be corrected that's another lesson on its own don't worry about that at this stage and then what they do is it's a bit of a hit and trial method so it's not accurate science so they hit they use different kind of magnetic needles and sizes and they put it in different holes and see whether they get the desired effect or not and when they see that the compass reading is at the desired reading then they stop. So it's a bit of a hit and trial. Try, some experienced magnetic compass adjusters, they get to the result faster uh, based on their experience. All right, the binnacle itself is made of non-ferrous material. It's made of wood and the reason or fiberglass. The reason is that it cannot be made of iron because it cannot be influenced. So if it is made of iron, it will get influenced by the Earth's magnetism. So the binnacle has to be made of non-ferrous material so that uh, the earth's magnetism has no effect on it. Otherwise, the compass will go haywire. You cannot use the magnetic compass then for direction keeping or bearing purposes. This is a more close-up look of the compass bowl mounted on gimbals and suspension system. Like I told you, the gimbals and suspension system um, allow it enough freedom for the compass bowl to move along with the listing and healing of the ship, but at the same time keeping the compass card horizontal for direction keeping and bearing purposes. This is the close-up look of the clinometer, like I showed you before. The clinometer tells you whether the ship is listing or healing. Uh, you can see here the ship is slightly listing to the starboard, that's right, by about 3 degrees. So the ship has to be completely upright. The needle has to be completely at zero for the compass adjuster to be able to adjust the compass. Again, this is a close-up look of the 
soft iron spheres. They are called the soft iron spheres because they correct for the ship's soft magnetism. Soft magnetism refers to temporary magnetism that keeps changing. Mm, hard magnetism or permanent magnetism refers to more permanent magnetism which uh, occurs with the ship's structures and the uh, cargo content and all that. So cargo content also keeps changing. But uh, soft magnetism or Kelvin's, Kelvin's balls and Flinders bars, they correct for the most of the temporary magnetism that the ship experiences. This is the Flinders bars case that I told you. Again, it is made of non-ferrous material so that it doesn't get influenced by the Earth's magnetism. And inside it, you can find discs or cylinder-shaped uh, magnets of different sizes and lengths that you can adjust. You don't have to fill the whole case up. It depends on how much you want to correct. This, is also, this also corrects for temporary magnetism, that is soft magnetism. Uh, and this is named after Captain Matthew Flinders uh, from the Royal Navy who discovered the cause of the local attraction of the ship on the compass. All right, these are, this is a more close-up look of the athwart ship and forward magnetic compass correctors. These are for temporary magnetism. And like I showed you, I told you remember before that there are a number of holes. And as you go from the bottom towards top, the effect of the needle increases. The needle comprises of the red and the blue, which denotes the north and the south pole of the magnet. So depending on what component of the magnet needs to be corrected on the ships, uh, you put in that color of the magnet uh, in the hole. The higher you go, the more is the effect. The lower you go, the less is the effect. And there are different needles, size and shapes available as well. All right. Now this is the, the healing red bucket I was talking about. So the picture I showed you before was a closed door. And I told you that door could be opened. It was a square shaped or a rectangle shaped door. So once you open the door, this is the arrangement you find. So it's like a bucket in which the needles can be pointed, put inside. And then this bucket is with a chain, bucket and chain arrangement. So this bucket is basically lowered into the hole on which it is resting currently. So you see the chain along with it. So you use this chain to lower the, uh, the healing error bucket system after you put in the magnets of the desired uh, orientation. So again here also, depending on the healing error. So this is a healing error magnetism which corrects for the permanent magnetism of the ship uh, and refers to the vertical magnetism that the uh, ship experiences due to healing and listing. And there are about seven, eight holes and there's one in the center. So you always start with the hole in the center first. And then as you put needles on the outer side, you always put a diamet uh, another needle on the diametrically opposite side. Uh, to counteract and again so needles are always put in uh, diametrically opposite sides and there's always one who, uh, and you start with the one in the center and then when you put the ones on the outer edge of the bucket you always put one on the uh, diametrically opposite side to counteract for the effect so you counteract for the potent starboard so it's like a bucket and chain arrangement and then this can be lowered and then you close the door all right so that was it uh, I hope uh, you got some idea of the magnetic compass and what a Kelvin's compass looks like and what are the different parts of the compass. If I ever get to it, I will try to make a video as well so you can see it in the video. Um, go through this video again if you want to uh, familiarize yourself with the magnet and let me know how you felt about it, whether you liked it or you didn't like it. And I'm very happy to receive your comments and feedback and thank you very much to all my subscribers and uh, People who give me ideas and suggest topics for me to cover. Very happy to do that for you. And uh, I'll see you soon with my next video.